The information provided in this program is of a general nature and is not intended to be personalized financial advice. We encourage you to seek appropriate advice from a qualified professional to suit your individual circumstances. Tower Insurance is facing a double hit with massive claims costs after Cyclone Gabriel and Auckland's floods. I asked the chief executive if it can afford to pay them all. And Scalar Up makes record earnings, how it's keeping margins strong amid a global slowdown. It's Monday the 20th of February and you're watching Markets with Madison. Tower Insurance has issued an earnings and dividend downgrade following the devastating cyclone and floods. The company has already had to trigger its own insurance to pay for thousands of claims. And more are set to come in. I spoke to its chief executive late last week and asked him how expensive it could all get. We received around 5,000 claims for the Auckland anniversary and Upper North Island event only two or three weeks ago. And so far we've received about a thousand for the uh, Cyclone Gabriel. Now it's still early and we know communications have been disrupted so we expect to receive a number more in the coming days. It's early days and we've all seen the footage and it's, it's heartbreaking to, to see the footage um, in the Hawke's Bay and around Gisborne areas. But we will receive hundreds more um, and we'll, you know, as soon as we receive those claims we'll lodge them and get on to, to settling them and helping those customers and communities who are impacted. Look, it's, it's a bit early to tell. Let's see how the next few days go. How much more expensive could these claims get? Well, we, we've indicated uh, today that the Auckland anniversary uh, event um, is going to be between 95 and 125 million as our cost estimate at the moment. So that's a lot of homes to rebuild and, and cars to replace, etc. It's still too early to tell where we are with Gabriel um, and what the ultimate cost will be. The key thing at the moment is to make safe those customers and communities impacted and then we'll get on to helping them as quickly as we can on the claims, but it's too early to tell you. Can you afford to pay all of those claims? Yeah, that was a big part of today. Tower remains very resilient. Uh, we're financially strong. We have a very robust reinsurance program and that's really important. And that was a key part of the message today was to know that Tower is in good shape. This is what we plan for. Ultimately, as heartbreaking as it is, this is why you have insurance and you want to know that your insurer is going to be there and that was a key part of the message today. As a business you also have your own insurer, have you had to tap them on the shoulder to pay for some of this? Reinsurance, it's, it's you know bantered around quite a bit, it's insurance for insurers. So we have an excellent panel, they know Tower very well, they know we're resilient and robust and we've been working with them and updating them on this journey as we go through these events and we're certainly looking to do a reinstatement and we're progressing that as we speak. Will you continue to insure homes that are in flood risk areas? Look, that's, it's really important. You know, New Zealand as a, as a country, nine out of 10 homes are insured. Nine out of 10 cars on the roads are insured and we're proud of that. You know, we understand the importance of insurance and we want to see that continue. What's really important right now is helping people understand their insurance. And we know a number of people don't understand the perils, in particular as it relates to floods. So we want to make sure we help educate people to understand their insurance, to get their cover right. And we want to be competitive with that insurance. A key thing right now as we look forward is to fast track ways to mitigate the impact of these floods and to work with councils and government and businesses to help mitigate these events which seem to be increasing. Would you like to see fewer homes built in flood risk areas? Yes, I, I think we need to understand better the flood prone areas, we need to rebuild wetlands, we need to you know, stop building on areas that are prone to uh, floods and erosion and coastal erosion and we need to help communities to to face into that. And I know we don't want to, it's a tough word to talk about is, is managed retreat, but we do need to start talking about it and we need to, to help you know, transition some of those communities away from flood prone areas. Will this all mean that premiums have to go up? Yeah, the last two years we've all been talking about, you know, post um, COVID, the, the pandemic and inflation that always keeps robbing us in our back pocket. Uh, we managed to weather that one, now we're getting storms. And, you know, inevitably, if inflation and these storms, you know, continue as we see them, it will result in higher reinsurance costs and higher premiums. 
And look, we as a company, Tao, we've invested heavily in technology. We've been heavy, uh, invested heavily in our operations and, and being very efficient. And we're able to absorb a lot of that. But ultimately, I think it's inevitable now that insurance premiums will go up to reflect higher inflation and higher events. Today, we announced that we were increasing our allowance for large events from 30 to 40 million. We think it's appropriately prudent to do that because there is quite a lot of the year to go in terms of our financial year. Um, and we are, of course, reinstating our reinsurance. So let's hope that's not the case, but you want to know your insurer is resilient. That's what Tower is saying to the market today, and we're very pleased to be helping impacted customers and communities, and we'll do that today, and we'll make sure we're there to do it tomorrow as well. Scalar Up seems to be the gift that keeps on giving, delivering record earnings for the half year. But the rubber and chemicals product manufacturer is starting to see signs of a slowdown internationally, with some customers, particularly in the US, pulling back on demand. Its chief executive explains what Scalar Up does and how it's keeping earnings strong. We often are the critical component in a larger OEM system. So a simple example is in America, the largest tapware company is Moen. We supply the critical component in the tap that ensures that the water is potable water standard, in other words, in other words drinking water standard, if that makes sense. That's one example. Of course, Scalarup is well known for red band gumboots, so, and I'm sure there'll be photographs in the press somewhere about red band gumboots, and of course it's very, very important. It's iconic in New Zealand. But Scalarup's an international business. About 82% of our revenue comes from overseas markets. So we do all kinds of interesting things. And I've been CEO for 11 years, and I almost every day I discover something new that's really exciting. So we do all kinds of things, parts of drive shafts of cars, sadly. <laughs> the automotive industry is not great. We do a lot of potable water products. We do infrastructure pipe rings. Of course, we do the dairy things. So dairy rubberware, food grade rubberware, food grade tubing, we do silicon tubing. So we do a lot of high-end products as well, many of which most people wouldn't see. So the essential consumable within a system. And essential consumable means we've turned one-off large boom-bust kind of things into regular monthly sales at reasonable margins. Given that 82% of your revenue is booked offshore, are you starting to see a slowdown in demand for some of your products in those economies? Certainly, where we have retail products, we saw that very quickly. So part of the reason we've seen volume impacts in the first six months. So what happened, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Pre-COVID, we had relatively cheap money. So demand was picking up in areas where maybe it shouldn't have, but that's an opinion. Through COVID, what happened is it was accelerated. So what happened is demand went up beyond the long term. Customers were struggling to get the products, they would over order, and it's called the bullwhip, it's a special effect that happens. So they'd over order and over order, then the shipping would be delayed, they'd order more. We had the same issue with our suppliers, our critical suppliers. Two outcomes happen in the first part of the bullwhip. You, incre you can't help it, you increase inventory, customers increase inventory, and then we now face potentially recessionary conditions, and everyone goes, oh, we've got too much inventory, and to be fair, we have increased our inventory around $10 million, or a bit more than that if you take a two or three year view. Most of that though was done strategically, and we have good reasons for doing it, and our inventory doesn't go off. So it's, uh, unfortunately it's not like red wine that tends to go up in value, it, but it will sell through. Our job now is to turn that extra inventory into cash, and the question obviously is how long will that take? I can't promise we'll do it in the next four months, but certainly over the next 12 months we expect it to return to normal. But the key thing is in the second half of the bullwhip, you have customers cancelling orders and as recession starts, housing starts drop down or whatever, you not only see a decline in orders, you see customers cancelling orders and of course there's the risk that companies would go bust and not pay you. I mean at the end of the day, you can record sales, but if you don't get paid, they're, they're not real. So out of all of that, where are we at with Scalarup? So people looked at the business and they kind of say, well, gee, industrial is going really well, Agri's behind. We saw that the second part of the bullwhip hit in July, where some large customers, particularly in the US, where it hits very, very quickly, they were trying to destock or have been destocking de for the last six months. The good news, the good news is January numbers are good. February numbers look good. So that's why we're confident about our guidance, 48 to 52 million NPAT. 
and another way of signalling the confidence, even though we've increased our debt and inventory and all those things, we've increased the dividend. It's another big week this week with many more half year results to come. Let's take a look at the lineup. Today, the big one will be A2 Milk. Tomorrow is PGG Rights in Mercury and Vector. Midweek, we've got EBOS and Spark. Also on Wednesday, don't forget it's the Reserve Bank's first rate decision of the year. Thursday, gosh, I need another coffee just looking at this. Tourism stocks, Auckland Airport, Air New Zealand and Tourism Holdings. Also Sky TV, Heartland Bank and agri-firms Scales and Seeker. A bit of property in the mix there too with Precinct and Vital Healthcare. You can probably expect a lot of cyclone-related commentary from all of those companies. More on Friday, you pretty much get the idea. Stay in touch this week and let me know what results you love to see and what ones you didn't. You can get all the numbers as they're announced on nzherald.co.nz. Now go put your money to work. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.